Well, hello. Good morning. It's Thursday. It happens to be the 13th of May, 2021. It's raining again. Wales, what can I say? Um, and as it's Thursday, it's template Thursday. So today's the day that I um, create a colouring template for the Facebook group, Angela Porter's Colouring Book Fans, for the members of that group. Um, I've been doing that since the start of the pandemic, a weekly template as a way to help people cope with the stress and fear and being stuck in the house or, you know, however you've, you've coped with it or dealt with it or, or whatever. But colouring certainly can be a way to help um, stay calm and to do something that takes your mind off everyday things. If you can lose yourself in the flow, then it's um, it gives your brain that break it needs. And afterwards, perhaps you don't worry quite so much about things. So I've got this here. It's um, A4, just marker paper. I'm gonna use the Uniball eye pen, micro-sized draw with. I may get a finer pen out at some point to add details, but um, I I have a feeling that today I just want to do something that has perhaps some flowers in it. I'm going to have some that go off the side, perhaps lots of flowers. Um, and I'm drawing them here so I've got that idea of where, th where I want things to go. And this, this is unusual for me. I don't normally do this, but I say don't normally, it depends what I'm drawing. But today I want lots of flowers. I think I want lots of flowers mainly because it's raining and color, flower colors would be lovely. And I also have been flipping through my visual dictionary, my Sibboldoni, Zib and um, some designs really um, stood out to me and I thought I really want to use these. So no further ado, I'm going to get to it and see where we go with this. So. Um, I've got no idea if I'm going to be able to talk while I do this. Perhaps I can. I'm um, feeling rather tired today. I did get more sleep last night because I didn't have anything happening in the evening, but still I'm feeling tired perhaps because I've had so much sleep, which sounds perhaps counterintuitive in some ways, but it's actually not. Sometimes I, the more sleep I have, the more tired I feel. I think it's because my body catches that, but here we are. So, yeah. So flowers, pretty flowers to colour. Fairly stylized, abstracty, not real worldy today, I think. And the circles are just there as a guide, really. And I am going to do smaller sections in some of these bigger parts. Just to help break the areas up, because I'm not a big fan of big areas to colour in, to be honest with you, which is going to be interesting for the background, but I have an idea for that. So that's my first one. There we are. As soon as I start drawing, suddenly things just aren't quite so intimidating. Perhaps. I don't know. So yeah, so it's raining today. I didn't get out for a walk yesterday. Um, the lack of sleep through being awake way too late on Zoom. And I'm not complaining about being on Zoom with people who 
follow my work and wanted to meet me and and it's been lovely to chat and it has been lovely even if I you know have that tendency to dominate I will learn eventually but um and I think part of it's to do with the fact that I live alone and I rarely get a chance to talk to anybody during lockdown so not that I'm complaining that I live alone it's my choice uh, but I guess it's made me realise that even though I live alone I still used to have a lot of social interaction in little ways every day so and sometimes not so little ways strange but, and I think that's allowed me to weather this that that living alone by myself and being quite self-contained in some ways I think has allowed me to weather the whole of this a lot better than other people uh, you know my biggest issue is the social anxiety that's crept in and I actually don't like it I don't like being fearful of other people of being wary of them and seeing people avoid you and you and realizing that you're trying to avoid getting too close to people is Um, it's been very unnatural, unnerving in some ways. You know, I've, I've mentioned this, that I, I am very wary around crowds of people. I don't do well where there are large groups of people, where it's noisy, where there's a lot of unpredictability. And especially if people are shouting or arguing, I find it incredibly difficult to be around it really has me on edge and really quite fearful in, in many many ways but um, it's a whole different thing when you're avoiding people not because they're being loud or argumentative as sometimes we get in town centres here as I guess you do around the world um, but it's that fear of are they going to make me ill? Are they are they are they carrying this nasty virus? Will it will it end up? Will I get it? And I don't like that. But it, I realise it's not a conscious thing that I've been doing. It's an unconscious thing, and a result of that, I suppose, fear. anxiety that has been there for over a year now it's not something that we're going to get over all that easily I don't think you know, it's become a, an ingrained way of life for many many people and to those who've barely been outside barely seen people it's going to be really difficult so, you know, as we perhaps come out of the situation here in the UK, I don't think things are going to return back easily to any kind of sense of um, what used to be normal. Is It's going to take people quite a while, especially as all the restrictions aren't going to be lifted at once. At least it gives, you know, a chance for breathing space and time to acclimatise and, and so on. But... Nobody really knows how far, how long it's going to take or if we'll ever need these measures again because, um, it, yeah, it's been a very bizarre, very strange kind of year and for me it also was that point in time when I was planning to start doing doing more things that I've wanted to but have found it difficult to do because I'm single such as travel on my own stay away you know um, go out and eat on my own at night if I am away and to do 
to not be so self-conscious and uh, right scaredy cat about such things it's um so all of my plans have been put on hold because i don't know when i'll be comfortable to do this now but there will come a day where i will where i'll think right okay you know it's it's hard enough for me to go more than just a couple of miles away from my home at the moment um, or a few miles away it's strange you know, I used to think nothing of hopping in the car and taking a long drive in, in the evening as the sun was setting. And now I'm wary of doing even that, which is crazy, because that's perfectly safe to do. It's that, it's the feeling of security in my own house, I suppose, and safety and familiarity and um, the lack of anxiety here I, ex I do experience. So it's... Um, yeah. Very different, so. So I think we'll have a, a page full of pretty flowers today of one kind or another with some patterns to fill the gaps in, obviously, because I'm not leaving a huge pile of background empty goodness sakes I'm not going to change that habit very easily but um, you might be able to see I have penciled in lines on the page here I always do that when I'm doing templates colouring templates because there needs to be a margin um, and for books every illustration I do has to be a specific size so they all have to be the same kind of size um, you know, they might vary a little bit, but not much. You know, we're talking millimetre, you know, millimetre or two, I guess. So in the grand scheme of things, they're, they're identical. But um, this, I, it, it gives me this edge that I can work in. And no doubt I will put line, you know, lines there because I do like an edge, a border. I really do. It's my work. Yeah, make it, you know, doing as I wish, I suppose, that, um, in terms of how I, um, have these flowers sort of like disappearing under that border, I'm making them have edges that aren't perfectly straight so that you can get a sense perhaps of the sense of, of, of dimension, I suppose, is the word I'm trying to grope around for. Of volume is the other word that's used in a similar kind of way artistically. There's another one. And I think I might just put some shapes like this here. And as I'm drawing, I am being aware that I need to close the gaps. Um, not so much for traditional media colorists, but for me, because I'm going to end up doing the color on this digitally, as I do. So, um, there's all of that. There's not a lot else that's been happening really here. It's, you know, my days are pretty much the same. Some days I do a lot more arty stuff than other days. Some days I do a lot less. I think it just depends as to what else is going on in my life or what has been going on. And I know the past year has been really tough because it you know in some ways but I've been home most of the time and I can create I think I've I found I've got more vacuums and there have been times where I've just had to reach for the comfort art side of things where I've been 
redoing patterns over and over in books in different ways. Um, even though I've got them in this sort of only my, my visual dictionary or in a new one or in a sketchbook, I, I still keep redoing them because they're familiar. And I do I do think that in difficult times we do we do hold on to the familiar perhaps more than we realise because there's security and comfort in that. And I certainly know around Christmas New Year I needed that comfort of patterns and so on that were f really familiar to me. Um, Time of year is always a difficult time for me for lots of reasons I'm not going to go into. And so things that are, that are comforting to me, that help me get through that couple of weeks around Christmas and New Year. I often go back for one fact. I actually spent an awful lot of time sat in bed drawing. You know, get up shower, have, get my breakfast, go back to bed, draw, get up, get something for lunch, go back to bed and draw. This bed, my bed, I suppose it's one of my main sanctuaries where I always feel very safe there and comforted as well because it's warm. And in the winter you need to be warm for sure. Okay. That's some interesting middle bits, so I may add some other interesting middle bits to some of these that are like this. This one certainly could do with some because that's a very bizarre pattern in the middle. But I have no doubt at all that the people who colour my books, my pages, will cope and make something beautiful out of it. Because they do. Each and every one of them. I'm always in awe of how people use colour in such different ways and you can give everybody the same template and it comes back different from each person. And um, even if you give a limited colour palette and so they use all the same kinds of colours, how they're put into it and what colours are put together. And I don't mind if people choose to add black and white or perhaps add another colour to it because they're finding it difficult with the, the four or five I've given perhaps. And it's um, it, it's always a source of never ending wonder how amazing all of this is that people do. And it really is magic. I say that colouring is magic. It brings it bring this completely to life. And I love seeing what happens when people do this. I really do. And they add colour and Bring, bring the drawings to life in their own ways, their own style and aesthetics and colour choices. So before, colour choices may not always be mine, the colour combinations, and because those are very personal things. But it's the overall thing, it's the way that people put things together and... make everything absolutely wonderful. Yeah, I know how long it takes to colour and it, I think it takes me probably longer because I'm fussy. I do have shortcut ways available to me which I sometimes use but um, it's not until I settle on a particular colour palette I suppose that I will be entirely comfortable in what I do oh happy with it and speed up a bit on my work but um it's always lovely to see how people 
approach it, especially as, you know, a lot of my work is quite abstract. You know, these are very abstract flowers, I suppose, or stylized flowers, imaginary flowers. It, you know, they are what they are, and what colours do you use on them? Well, the answer is any ones you like. It really, 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 really isn't that important in the grand scheme of things. Choose what you love. Use what you love. Use what mediums bring you pleasure and joy. If something doesn't, it's okay to put it to one side. Boy, have I learnt that one. Keep trying different media. Ah, I'm discovering that oh, I'd love to do that, but it's not really me. You know, I admire people who can use these different media, you know, paints and so on, in such wonderful ways. And I am pretty dismal at it. it. Has to be said. Are those petals or leaves that I've just added, you decide. You can make those decisions. And you can add to. You know, colouring templates, I wouldn't have an issue with anybody who decided they wanted to add patterns or shapes or forms into any of my templates to bring it, you know, to separate out sections or to decorate sections. In fact, it'd be lovely to see more people do that. I guess to use it in a sort of like... Um, the parlance, I think, is a zentangle string. Very complicated string, but a string. Where the strings are the sort of like the lines that separate the area you've got into sections for you to add zentangle patterns to. And you can either ignore the lines or work with them. Entirely up to you what you do. But I think the, fo the po whole point of putting a string down is it breaks that big white space or that big area of blankness, which can be so intimidating for people. Oops, I've smudged there a bit. It's okay. It's got to be scanned in and worked on digitally, so that'll be fine. Let's have a look. You know, these need just that bit, and this one will need a bit there, as soon as I've done the others. There we go. And this one can have a bit of something around the edge I think something just that little bit surprising in some ways there we go so it's now about filling the gaps in and seeing what I can do here with and if I need to draw underneath the ones that are already there I'm fine with doing that to be honest So yeah, to see more of these done in that kind of way, perhaps with a base colour, pale base colour and dark lines, dark lines to give the patterns on top or perhaps a darker base colour and then paler lines on top to add patterns would be lovely to see. I guess it's um, that confidence in being able to do that. I say to, you know, say to myself often, it's only pen and paper or pencil and paper and as these templates are free and printable. You try something out, you don't like it, print it again and do again. It's learning. And perhaps I'll do some of that when I'm adding colour later on. I don't know. I do from time to time, but I tend not to colour templates in their entirety unless it's for a challenge that I'm also taking part in in the group because you know I feel an obligation to if I set it I feel I need to um, make sure that I take part as well especially when the colours are ones that I wouldn't choose myself because that stretches me it challenges me 
And there are times when I really do think, Angela, what on earth were you thinking in choosing this particular colour palette? It seemed really good. It seemed a really good idea at the time, but dear goodness. Yeah. I know. But I persevere and I work with it. Same way that other people do. And... Um, it all works out beautifully fine in the end. It really does. And... Um, And you learn something about yourself, I think. I think, yeah, challenges in life. Well, we have them all, don't we? You know, there are ones that are difficult to deal with, events that happen in life that are unexpected, that we find challenging emotionally, mentally, financially interpersonally you know there can't be any person on this planet that doesn't have challenges in their life or if they deny them then it's their way to cope with a lot of pain and loss I suppose but we all do have them but some challenges are fun and I use the word challenge, it's not a competition. I don't do competitions in the group. I don't like competitions and competitiveness. In something that's supposed to be, in my mind, something mutually supportive, something that everybody can share in and enjoy together. I mean, you know, there are people who do enjoy competitions. Well, there's plenty of places they could go to get that sense of competition as well. And that's entirely up to them, really. But in particular, you know, the particular Facebook group that I'm doing this for, the, the Angel Porter's Colouring Book Fans one, we've, Brett, myself, we've occasionally talked about running competitions and I don't like that kind of competitiveness. And I think we've, we've tried to keep the competitiveness out of the group so that everybody feels welcome, that there's no judgment passed on what people share other than, oh my God, that's beautiful. Or that's so different. I love what you've done. I'd never thought of doing things like that. Um, to, you know, really lovely comments and supportive comments as well and congratulatory and celebratory I suppose and I like that I do like that that that's the kind of thing I I like and it's it's done in a genuine way by people and I think that's fab I think it stems as well from my times teaching where you celebrate you know, special needs pupils especially but with all of them it doesn't matter but it was a lot easier for me to offer that kind of praise to be received by my special needs pupils for some reason the mainstream teenagers weren't too keen on it I think that's why I had such difficulty in teaching them because I would be quite different I would imagine than other teachers but praising them for what they've done for having a go for challenging themselves to do something to show that they've learnt something new or they've you know it, it's all of these things that you find to help people gain some self-confidence and when people don't want to gain that self-confidence or where they you can't find a way in to help them then it can be really really difficult and um, you know that praise perhaps isn't wanted in front of their peers because they 
they'll get teased about it or it's not the the image the persona they want to show to to the world or what um, is expected of them by those who know them and I found that very very difficult you know don't get me wrong it was quite difficult sometimes with the you know special needs pupils because they came with some came not wanting to to learn they'd already decided they were a failure and no matter what I or anybody else tried their way out of continually trying to prove to, you know fear of working or doing well was to behave badly and cause problems for everybody so they'd eventually have to be removed from the class for being so disruptive nobody felt safe and really it's really sad because they were never giving themselves a chance and perhaps that's me putting my own set of values on things because of you know how important education was and still is to me learning and it was a way you know and I wanted everybody to have that and to be able to shine shine at being who they were being themselves and to find a curiosity in the world and just want to learn more and question more but yeah it can be very very difficult as you're dealing with peer pressure pressure from home the community or the the uh, group outside of school and sometimes you can make good inroads and the next time you see them it's like you've gone backwards because everything that seemed to have been done to make that little bit of a difference in some way has been completely overdone overnight or even in an hour in the next lesson because they were the different group of people and it's really difficult and sometimes heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, teaching was a, f a funny career for me, I think, in, in some ways. Is that I found I found my niche. I found where I could ex where I could excel and shine at. It was my particular personal qualities that allowed me to do that with the children with difficulties learning and disabilities and of all kinds and I think because I'm quite a quirky eccentric kind of person myself that was a way for them I suppose modeling it's okay to be different and that you know not to be ashamed of who you are in some ways even though I used to be but I you know I was very good at hiding it just to be and have that sense of curiosity and wonder and amazement and excitement about things and that part of me just seemed to fall mostly flat with what we used to call mainstream pupils You know, 28 years of it, I left to focus on art, from science to art. That's beginning to look okay, isn't it? And it's only, I've been drawing for about half an hour. So, <laughs> the, the template's not going to take me that long to do, and I think I might, do, I was thinking I was going to have to say, I'm going to shut up now, and the rest of this you'll see me draw, but in time lapse, you know, fast motion, speed it up with some music on, but I think I'll get it done in, in this hour. So I try to set myself a, a limit of an hour for videos. And I know that you can turn off my chit chat and um, speed up the video through the panel, you know, at the bottom of the video. And if that's what you want to do, 
I'm not going to be offended because unless you tell me, I won't know. I think you may have noticed that this is, I am drawing here for a colouring template and I think you can tell that the spaces I've left are much bigger than what I do in my personal drawing because I'm very much aware that people need to get you know even the sh you know sharp point pencils into colour um, you need a fair sized space and I'm trying not to get too many little spaces in the background I've got one there and the really teeny tiny spaces I will fill in with black so that people don't feel they can't you know colour something and get frustrated so but I try not to do too much of that because it becomes overpowering but um this is certainly coming along nicely I'm quite happy with this I think it's a bit different to what I've been doing of late and it's all thanks to me showing off my visual dictionary in um some videos and to people who've joined us on Zoom groups. People have asked me where do I get my inspiration from and well it's from all places but um, when I'm looking for something on a particular theme if I'm working on say a colouring book of a particular you know a particular theme I waffled then I'm sorry then I will get I do gather reference material I use Pinterest and um, but I'll also do quick quick drawings try and break things down into simple forms into you know this particular book you can see off that side or um, You know on or in a sketchbook so that I've got references my next one I really do need to get references I've got references together but I need to start drawing from them because I need to get an I some things ideas in my head for what particular templates will have as their theme because that's important let me just have a look here because I do want to That's one of my favourite pencils. It's got an 0.3 lead in it. And what's it called? It's a Uni Kurutoga. And when you click the top, the pencil actually turns round so that it's you're constantly using it from different directions and, and the lead sharpens itself if you like or keeps itself um You know, you don't get a flat edge um, that you're working with. Although that can be really useful if you, if I want to do lines in pencil that are thick or thin. But I, as you can see, the only time I really use a pencil is for quick outlines and for marking out my. Um... Do you know, I was going to say territory, and I guess it is. It's the territory on the page that is going to become filled with lines and patterns and shapes and so on. Yeah, the territory, template territory. So, so I'm a great believer in recognising that people do the best they can at any particular time in their life and the best you can do can change not just from phase of life to phase of life but or with your education level or experience level but it can change from moment to moment in a day you know the best I can do when I wake up in the morning is different to the best I could do when I'm very tired and it's bedtime varies with moods with me I know that there are times when I there's no point me drawing for um, for a particular project 
if my mood isn't right because I'll end up creating things that I'm not happy with. Sometimes I have to say, right, I've got to get this work done because the deadline is looming or has whooshed, has gone whoosh as it passes me by. So that happens sometimes. Luckily, my editors are very forgiving. I'm sure they build a bit of wiggle room into deadlines for me without telling me. Don't tell me you've done that. Don't let me assume that it's the case, but reassure me if I am a little bit late because because life. Um, I'm just you know opening or well, not opening these up um, separating them just that little bit so that the big spaces like this there's quite a big space here so I think I may just pop some lines in just single lines just to break it up a bit and I'm likely to do the same here just to help with those areas of course if you want to colour in big areas and don't want to be bothered with the little bits who says you can't just ignore these lines and colour over them difficult for you using a gel pen I suppose or any kind of opaque media but if you make the lines disappear you make the lines disappear it's your template to do with in terms of colouring what you wish but you know it's your personal interpretation and if you don't like colouring lots of little spaces then you just ignore those lines and colour over them there's no colouring in police nobody's come and, you know, I'm certainly not going to come and tell you you've done it wrong these are guidelines they're the bones, the skeleton, the possi you know, possibilities. It's up to you to add the flesh onto it, the flesh of colour onto it. Bring it to life in the way that suits you best. It's got nothing to, you know, I'm giving you that structure. You interpret it the best you can. I've got an awful lot of smudges here. It's going to be a lot of clean up <laughs> digitally. So, how are we doing? Oh. 40 minutes. This won't take me that long because these kinds of things are pretty familiar to me and I'm staying within a particular theme. I just want a page full of flowers or flowery type things. Perhaps some of them are almost, I don't know, um, microbial perhaps or something you'd see underneath a microscope but I'm fine with that as well. definitely going to be some clean up lines going on this morning today but that's okay because that happens and that's a rather unusual one but I'm sure it will look rather lovely when it's been colour's been added and make some sense of it because I like to challenge as well so there we are I think that is as much as I'm going to do of adding these. So I'm going to have some clean up to do of lines and things. Um, I'm just going to put the border in and I'll vaguely follow the pencil lines but I'm not using a ruler to draw the lines because I don't like overly straight lines in general. I know there are place, times and places for them but I think the wobbly lines, or slightly wobbly lines, the slightly imperfect straight lines, are one of my signature things for um, templates and drawings, mostly. It, it, it does depend what I'm doing. There we go. 
go and then there's this one which can play greys and say glaze i've not had tea or coffee yet this morning i just wanted to get on and draw so that'll be the next thing on my agenda while this video is being saved and processing is to go and get my morning cuppa so that is this week's colouring template and I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go. I knew I wanted to use flowers like this because I had flipped through my this book and I thought oh, I'd love to use ones like this. I haven't used any of these. I haven't put any circles on them. I should have looked back there because that would have been fun. I have got space to add any. Mm, yeah, not, not now. And um, there's only one thing left for me to do, is to find a little space where I can put my initials. Always hide them away somewhere, colour over them, ignore them, whatever. But I always put them there because it shows it's mine and I I will put you know the information at the bottom as I usually do and when I do things that are coloured I tend to um, not coloured version that I'll share on social media I put um, watermarks on and things and that's the reason why I partly colour it as well because it stops people from necessarily downloading the song. I know there are ways of doing this, you know, stealing work, people do it, you know. I just think it's wrong that just because, I've said this before, just because something is on the internet doesn't give you the right to use it in the way you want unless there's expressed permission given for it or is it made expressly clear there's an angel policy. An angel policy is where you buy something or you, 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 you have something and you're allowed to use it for um, your personal use freely. But if you sell it, you have to credit the artist in some way as saying, this isn't my work, the, the design was by so-and-so. Um, or you buy a license to use the work if you're doing it for full commercial reasons. Um, or you buy it from somewhere where it is licensed, so somewhere like um, Stock Photo or whatever they are. Well, there's so many places um because it you know it is theft it's theft of my work and um, this i'm giving freely to the group but it doesn't mean that people can make money off it just because i've given it freely because i'm not making money not from this my mind is ticking around doing perhaps perhaps you could leave me a comment whether you think it'd be a good idea because I am sort of like, I have been thinking about it for a while, of doing a monthly like newsletter or a subscription, you know, with a subscription where there, you get an exclusive template each month and something that, you know, would be different or, I can't say different, but exclusive to my subscribers. So leave me a comment if you think that would be something that would be a good idea or something you might subscribe to. because. I'm not really all that sure whether I want to do it. I'm not very good at selling myself or providing things like this and having some feedback would be great. Um, because I do need to make an income, <laughs> you know, I, I work and I need, to, you know, I, as much as I do colouring books, it's, it's an income, but it's not, you know, everything that's, you know, um, that's needed by me. But, um, just let me know and, um, I'll, I'll, I'll get my mind around it um, or perhaps there could be exclusive content on YouTube tutorials and things like that I don't know um, we'll see it's something that I am thinking about but I've not really got there because it's a bit too far it's not like people really won't want to and I'll end up feeling an idiot for trying so but when it's something that I love like colouring templates or well, something different and of course if you wanted to do that and you wanted me to make them available so you could use them and sell them then that's fine it would be factored into pricing because you know because because 
but we'll see. Certainly need to start doing things for Etsy or um, anywhere else. You know, Etsy's becoming awkward because of well, perhaps is it becoming awkward? I don't know. But anyway, I'm wittering, and I need some tea or coffee or mocha, um, and to get breakfast sorted, perhaps. So it's quarter past eight. It's taken me less than 50 minutes to draw this um, because it's it looks complicated but it's it's relatively a simple template to draw compared to others that I do and I yeah there are some gaps that are really no I'm gonna leave them I decided it was done so I'm going to leave these spaces up here because there needs to be space for a background I think so I'm going to finish this here with the words I say now is that any product I mention in the video I've bought for by myself, I'm not paid or sponsored by any company to mention them or to promote them or to do a review of, you know, any, any thoughts and opinions of my own. And just to say thank you for watching. Thank you for liking the video if you've done so. Thank you even more for subscribing. I haven't got a huge number of sus subscribers fingers crossed it'll keep growing not for my not because I want to have a huge following or to be famous or anything like that I don't know. I'm just me I'm just Angela I'm nothing I'm just another human being like everybody else but it's got that feeling of yeah I'm doing something that's valuable for people for something that people enjoy whether it's to watch to relax to learn um, to see how I draw things to listen to me witter on about stuff, whatever is wandering through my head at the time. And um, it does mean a lot in that way that I don't feel like I'm, I'm talking to myself, perhaps. And that's valuable for me. That really is, because I'm able to voice my thoughts, whether it's about drawing or about other things. And I try to keep it, you know, about life and you know, general things. You know, I've mentioned about copyright today because it came into my head and it's one of my big bugbears from time to time. It really does. I can, I can get really upset about it and it's that's not good. You know, it's not a lot I can do about my older art that's perhaps not as well protected as and, and marked as my, my newest stuff is, but, you know, it's still annoying and especially as I've made no money off a lot of that stuff myself. I don't create art to make money, but when other people do, it's, it's, it's annoying because I share so people can have a smile or enjoy what they see and learn from it, perhaps, get ideas and inspiration. So, so there we are, that's today's colouring template. So I will be posting everything about the same time. Um, on social media so this video won't be out before I've put the, the template on so on a Thursday I always put my work on the group first and then everywhere else afterwards and that'll be the case with the video will go out at about the same time I'm wittering enjoy the rest of your day I'm gonna go and get tea and breakfast so take care have fun enjoy bye bye